Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to uh, uh, this uh, Intro to Business class. You're taking me online, face-to-face, uh, -face, or uh, in a hybrid session. This is a quick overview of what we discussed in the classroom on uh, 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 doing business globally or internationally. Okay, so we're going to be talking about global economy, major uh, workplaces, trade agreements, international trade agreements, exchange rate, competitive advantages, going international, uh, levels of international involvement, international organizations, barriers to international trade, uh, understanding culture, uh, barriers to international trade. Oh, I hit that twice. I wonder what I did uh, on this. My error. Uh, I'll get rid of it later. Legal concerns and uh, what they call uh, SME. And the SME is more of a, a international. Here we'd call small business administration or small businesses up to 500. Uh, when you're going globally, they refer to small businesses as SME, small to medium enterprises, all right, and getting help uh, trade. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So here's what we have. You have to look at this. This is an update on some of my videos. Right now, we have President Trump in office. Whether you like President Trump or not, irrelevant. Here's what his administration is doing. What is President Trump or the Trump administration doing internationally? What's going on with the trade, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, the tariffs, everything else with China. What's going on with the EU? Is there going to be tariffs in there? What's going on with uh, uh, NAFTA? The, repl the replacement of NAFTA was passed, and that's going to be an act in law. I think that he's going to sign. I think he already signed off on it. If I'm mistaken, by the time you listen to the video. Now, I just want to understand when you read previously to now, there's a shift going globally. When it used to be global international business, I would be selling internationally. Uh, have an export and import. And then all of a sudden I had to do uh, globally because it expands my market. So there's, there's advantages like we discussed in class. But now what I have to look forward to is what's changing. And when, when I looked at globalization, that means one world market, one world, uh, uh, like uh, Freeman would say, a flat economy. We're in that situation but not exactly. It seems like the pendulum's going to the other way, more in the middle. We're going back from uh, uh, more into international and looking more at gl uh, and looking at global, uh, just for uh, uh, business trade, but not for migration of people or individuals. And we're going back to the nationalist uh, uh, frame, uh, framework. So most countries are looking at what's in it for my country. Like if you look at the Trump administration, what's in it for America? What makes America? What's the advantage for me? If I'm buying something or doing an agreement with another uh, business, I'm always looking. I want to use their services, but what's the advantage for me? International, we'd be talking about the comparative work. What work do you have as me trading with you? What benefit do I get? What's the negative and the positive? That's what you have to look at. it From a small or a SME, a small and medium business, you have to work locally. That's where you're at. But you got to think globally. Could I buy my products from overseas, my supplies? Could I sell some in another country? That opens up my market. And all this came into about because of what? The internet. The net uh, internet. E-commerce allows me to stay in one location or location that's favorable for my business but able to uh, uh, sell my products across borderless uh, borders, for lack of a better word. Now, let's look what's going on. For now, so we have some major agreements, and I'm going to talk about this. If I look at NAFTA, which is a North American Free Trade Agreement, that took the whole continent of North America, Mexico, Canada, and U.S., and looked at it as one trading block. With the new administration, he's changing the mindset. He re uh, renegotiated the agreement, but now it's called USMC, United States, Mexico, and Canada. So instead of being this one global market, he's basically going back to the national sovereignty, Mexico, U.S., Canada. There's an agreement between them, but that means with this agreement, maybe I could trade individually to other countries. So instead of just trading in blocks, like when we went uh, later on, we're going to be talking about the Asian block and everything else. How do we basically start have individual trade agreement? Still doing globally, but individually. Hey, it, it's an exciting world. I mean, uh, remember, uh, if I looked at everything else, whether what you're looking at this administration, what are they doing to the trade? What are they doing with all these agreements? What's going on? Is the uh, uh, landscape changing? And is it changing to the favor of the U.S. or is it changing to the other thing? 
just a, a prelude to uh, what we're going to learn. So let's go back to the lecture. So the global economy. And remember, you already got my constant map, so I'm going to put this on. So if I, and, and this was an exp uh, explanation of globalization. Globalization basically was I could uh, sell in, uh, no borders, for lack of a better word. But borders and a lack of uh, happiness, that means one size doesn't fit all and I lose my own identity so that's kind of still i want to trade internationally but i still want to keep my own identity and help my own constituents for my country not to uh, spread it all out like with manufacturing going to china how do i bring it back here how do i help my own workers so it's, uh, you know because that's a negative i get a good deal for my uh, for my product but then i lose people you know we we talked a couple um, uh, uh, classes ago about uh, uh, ethics, you know, you know what I mean? Social responsibility. Not only do I have to have social responsibility back to my customers, I should have social responsibility back to the country that I'm working with or just my base country that I'm operating out of. Okay, so import, you know, things coming in, export going out, and I'll just open these up. I'm not going to go into this because we already discussed this in class, but some people are following along with my concept maps and you could add on there. You know, government, business, new technology, and then we, we talked about, oops, sorry, uh, uh, change that but the x-ray we talked about new technologies uh, uh make communication better everything else we travel more now there's also the issue if you have some kind of virus which is going on right now and i want to mention it because you know you may be watching this two uh, two years later and you go what virus are you talking there's always a virus going on now do we spread these viruses more because we're more interconnected when we used to be spread apart and not so close to technology or to travel or to innovation, we could get away with that, okay? Okay, world population by a continent. Now, I've got a picture here. So if I'm looking at this, basically the U.S. is about 8% of the world population. Africa, 14%. But when you look at the factors of uh, production, they have a lot of people, but they don't have the, the, the wealth. They don't have the facilities, uh, the structure. But even though work is going there, because China, not China, Asia, and, and that, that includes, uh, for lack of better words, uh, China and India, you know, uh, 1.5 billion for each country. But that's 60%. Why do you think businesses are trying to come into Asia, come into here to do business with them? They're doing business with them because they're potential customers. They're potential markets I could get in there. And they're also potential suppliers. So I'm working. Now that we're having an issue with, uh, with the Trump administration having tariffs, but they're kind of uh, 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 just kind of like a, 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 a pause button now, you know, phase one. All right, see what phase two does. But what's going to happen now, but the manufacturer going, hey, what if this phase two doesn't work out and the U.S. puts on more tariffs? Let's start looking at Vietnam. Let's start looking at uh, uh, other countries, Japan or something else. Uh, North Korea may be a good uh, uh, thing. North Korea, what? they're communist. Yes, they're communist country, but if everything works out and they start coming in and drop their nuclear uh, uh, program and get into the economy, I've got inexpensive labor. I've got a lot of development. And North Korea isn't a good thing to get to the South Korean market, the Japanese market, the Chinese market. And I will have a hub to work out of and still, uh, uh, I'm just looking as a business person. It's an option. It gives me all new opportunities again, okay? And then you got Australia. So if I'm looking at this, why are people upset to the U.S.? We utilize maybe about 30, 40 percent of all the natural resources, and we're the smallest uh, uh, population uh, per datum, all right? Okay, so the trade agreements, and again, we talked about NAFTA. Remember, we talked about European Union, what's going on with that, uh, 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 Britain. Uh, UK is leaving the European Union. Is that going to affect it? Is this going to be as strong of a, 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 a trading block as it is? Or should we now start having agreements with uh, uh, Britain? Is Poland and Czechoslovakia, some of the other countries, are they going to look like I'm leaving out of here? Italy. All those are happening. So when I'm doing trading with the European Union, am I looking for a long-term commitment or what's going on? I have to be aware as a business person. Or do I see an advantage? Do I see something? Okay, now I can start trading to, uh, with UK. Or maybe I to get a better deal with the EU because they lost a big trading uh, block. Okay, World Trade Organization, we'll talk about that. Let's see, you know, Global has anything out there. Association of uh, Southeast, again, we're, we're in there, we pulled out, we're doing individual trade agreements instead of doing it by a block. It's almost like bundling or unbundling. Do I bundle and get all the countries here with one thing or do I just do individual? I only want this, this, I, want to, I don't want to deal with all the Asian company uh, countries, just a certain individuals that is to my advantage. Manage. Okay? 
and then I got uh, the other one, Central American Free Trade Agreement, Lisca, Brazil. These are all trade partners that we could do in a, a, an agreement, but is it going that way? I'm not going to say this is where it's at, but the things are changing with this administration, so I have to be aware of that as a business person. Would I like Trump or not? Uh, irrelevant. I have to work in this, uh, in this environment that's being created. Okay, and then Trans-Pacific Partnership, we got out of that one. All right, all right. So international trade, what is international trade? Balance of, uh, of uh, trade. I want to basically, if I'm trading with a company, I want to be receptacle. So I could buy, they could buy my products, I could buy theirs. Hopefully I don't have this, this kind of a discrepancy where I'm getting all their product and they're, they're making their market so tight to get in that I can't get, I get in, but I've got to give away so much, I'm making a profit and it's not uh, worth it, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, hurting my own uh, uh, market that I came out of, okay? So I'm trying to find that fair balance of trade. Whether you like Trump or not, the ministry's a business person. Like, understand that. Forget about the damn politician. He's a business person. He's thinking of business. What's the best deal for the company I'm working for? In this case, the country I'm representing. Trade surpluses, that's where we owe uh, more. We owe everybody. We're trying to reduce that with the tariffs. It is reducing our trade surplus, for lack of better words. Uh, uh, deficit, uh, negative when the country imports more than exports, and various charts. And you had that in the book, and I'm going to go into that okay exchange rate what's my dial uh, value word right now if i'm looking at china the china the, when they said manipulation of currency if they keep their yen yen uh, their currency lower than the u.s dollar basically people buy from them because the price when, when i convert it over the u.s dollar it, it takes more dollars uh, to buy u.s products but with a strong u.s dollar i have i could buy more chinese product because their currency is lower if the chinese yen goes up or equal to the u.s in international people can say hey i buy from china buy from u.s wait a minute they got manufacturing i kind of like the quality i can i, I, I like the structure I'm, uh, I'm working with i will go in there do you see what i'm talking about if i had the option between between two and I'm looking which one's better and the prices are equal everything else I'm gonna to go to the one that I I have a perceived value that's gonna be a, a, a better quality okay all right so uh, major training partners you had that exchange rates okay so uh, so when you're looking at a strong dollar it's good for the US if I'm buying stuff overseas we buy too much overseas we a weaker dollar a little bit weaker dollar now all of a sudden sure it costs me more if I buy stuff overseas but now my products are less so people overseas will buy my products because uh, uh, they're comparable and I get a good deal uh, of that. So exchange rate is something you have to be aware of. Either large companies watching or small companies, just be aware of what's going on. A competitive advantage. What are the absolute advantages? We're the number one. No one else. What advantages does the U.S. have? It used to be technology. Now it's India and China. What advantages do we have? We've got creativity so far. What advantage? Do we manufacture? No, we're a service. We have no advantage. I could buy somebody else to do my cleaning. I could buy somebody else to come up with an idea. So now when we're coming back with manufacturer, uh, we do have an advantage we're a war machine for lack of it we have the best military equipment that could be, be made in the world you don't want to use it but that's what we are but let's turn that instead of the war let's come up with new creativity and everything else to do more into manufacturing so let's have an advantage of manufacturing technology creativity we are very creative because our population is so diverse when you look at the diverse population we're not in, in china they're creative but they're all thinking the same way. They all went to the same uh, uh, schooling. The, unless you go to different schools, you got different people, different ways of looking at it, different thought pattern, different viewpoint, different ideas. That's what gives us the creativity. We're creative, but we don't, we don't follow through. If we can't make any money within the first three, uh, three, five years, we sell it and China buys. Oh, it's a good idea. We we tinker with it, and now we're mass producing it, and now we're uh, we're beating you. So we have to be able to take it from instead of just having ideas in a very short term. Uh, to gain a, a, a return on investment, expand it a little bit more so we do an investment and we have more of a long term, a long -term uh, vision. And that may be the case, whether you like it or not, that's the way it's going. People are looking a little bit more long term. Let's go back in the U.S. because if Trump runs the election next time, it's going to be status quo. If he doesn't uh, win the election and it is a, a different party, independent or democrat whoever comes in there then i have to as a business have to refocus i'm going to wait a year to see what are the new regulations and could i be 
successful in this new environment that I have to do uh, globally. Okay, uh, going international. Okay, again in here, uh, international products. Yeah, it's expanding my market. It brings in new ideas. It, it works out well. Uh, you know, we're on the same planet. Let's work together and uh, uh, be an individual, but still be part of the uh, overall uh, global society. Okay, okay. Look, I, I live in Lake Zurich. But I'm also an Illinoisan. I'm also uh, right. So even though I'm in Lake Zurich, I look at the other suburbs, how it affects. How does it, uh, Illinois affect me? But Lake Zurich, or wherever you're living in, in Palatine or whatever, in Grays Lake, you basically have to look at that community uh, uh, first. That's why I'm living there, and then I see uh, what the surrounding communities, how, what effect and cause it has on me, uh, my quality of life, and the standard of living. Okay, levels in international. You have international firms and multinational. Okay, now international firms are selling ex. Important, important. We talked about that in class. One real quick. Multi multinational firms, they don't look at any borders at all. The whole world is my uh, playing field. So if the U.S. is in a recession, I just sell to China. If uh, uh, EU is going to a recession, I sell to the U.S. I don't really care. I'm trying to I'm trying to maximize my investment for the organization. I have no loyalty to any one country. Even though I'm in that country host and I'm in that host country because it got low taxes, because it got less restriction, because I could keep most of my money, because I could transfer some, uh, some of my money. Think about this. Remember, I want you to look at it not from this mechanistic. Think about why our company is doing this. That's the interesting part about multinationals. Remember, multinationals, they have no loyalty except to their organization. And look, but they're good social citizens. I'm not going to say that they're that uh, mean, just only with a dollar, but they don't, uh, they're looking at other countries, which one is more profitable and which market I could expand to. And sometimes if one market's saturated, I have other markets that can still sell my products just, uh, just tweet it a little, okay? All right, so now look at the organizational structures. I'm, uh, we're going here pretty quick here, okay? Uh, international structures. So if I look at, remember, those of you, uh, if this is the first time you listen to my video, I'm live. I do very little editing. What you hear is what I do, and I'm doing an overview. Take my class uh, at a community college or take a class at uh, uh, Intro to Business or International Global class or uh, Intro to uh, International Business at any of your community college. Get the best bang for your money or at a four-year university, and so you'll understand the concept. This, uh, this uh, uh, class here is just a quick overview. What do I should look at? International organizational structures. Okay, so I have independent agents. I have licensed agents. I have strategic alliances. And I'll open these up. I'm not going to go into it because we talked about these already. So that you could stop my video at any time and lo uh, uh, lock these up. What you're trying to do is long-term relationship. And we, when I look at long-term relationship, NAFTA was a long-term relationship. But what happened 15, 20 years ago is no longer uh, uh, viable now because the market changed, the technology changed, workflows change, uh, the economies change, uh, the cultures change. I have to have some kind of a, a reset button or renegotiation. So if I'm looking from a business, no, you don't have a business that I sign an agreement is there forever. If I look at the uh, um, uh, 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 NATO, NATO's agreement worked well back with Russia. Now Russia is selling gas, selling everything else to uh, to Germany. Is connection with China, Iran, everything else. It's just where they're located. Are they really that uh, that? Uh, 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 for lack of better words, that threat that it used to be back then. Is NATO's mission, what it used to be then, really vital now? Do we really need that? Do we need that money, money or do we uh, adjust that kind of alliance or agreement? I'm just saying you have to have an adjustment. So NAFTA went so far, now it's adjustment. Now with the USMC, I got to learn a new acronym, they basically have, after so many years, there's a clause, so let's readjust to see so it's, uh, it works well for both parties. So it's a clause, you stop it, and it's a renewal uh, process, and let's see uh, what works, what doesn't work, uh, renegotiation, already part of the contractual agreement that you, uh, all businesses usually have. Okay, so you have that. Okay, barriers to international trade, uh, social differences, that's always a barrier, you know, languages, religion, uh, uh, economic difference, uh, no common currency, no global system, even though you got the World Trade Organization. Uh, that's questionable. Whether it worked back then, is it uh, 
are viable now or should be restructured. With this administration, we like he's restructuring everything. It's like it's almost like they say uh, Trump's a bull in in a China store. He's just throwing everything around. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. Okay, so he's he's doing chaos. Chaos after a while is also could be planned chaos. But when it all settles down, now you have a new uh, market, a new economy. Hopefully for the good. I don't know. I, 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 I'm an optimist. You know what I mean? It, it may work. It may not. I don't know. All right? I have nothing to do with it. I'm a small business person. This is where I'm at. Here's the environment. I'm looking what's going on. Oh, the buy, okay, I can't buy from China. It's going to be terrible. Oh, now I can buy from China. But maybe I should look at Vietnam now. Or maybe I should look at Brazil. Or maybe I should look at uh, uh, Guatemala. Uh, 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 some other countries that make sense. And now uh, uh, they're closer. There's no, uh, the, uh, I still get a good deal. And, and if, uh, whatever works, as long as, uh, remember, when you go globally, it's not the constituents from one country to the other country that are upset. It's the government having a problem. It's the parents are fighting. It's the managers are fighting. The people, hey, come on, I just want to get a job. I don't really care. It's pity. Why are you messing around with me? Just pay me well. Let me be happy. But you see, but they're fighting. I have to work in those boundaries. I have to work with the uh, the environment I'm dealt with, and I have to be proactive more. But see, it's easier for a small uh, SME, you know, small to medium business enterprise, because I could adjust quickly. It's like, uh, it's almost like I got a tiny house. Uh, there's a bad, uh, I could just move the tiny house. I'm just making versus a, a big house. I can't move. I'm stuck with it. I have a little more uh, mobility. Okay, so let's see. Understanding cultural environments. Let's go. You have social orientation, right? Individual and, and uh, has feet. Uh, in the book, they, they, they talked about all that. Power orientation, you know, power respect, which country. And when I'm looking at a power, it's not only the country. It's like certain things uh, and certain things. Uh, some managers have more power, have more respect. Some uh, uh, individuals in the U.S. women are equal. Other countries, uh, women may be a uh, second class. Like, don't look at me. I'm international. This is a culture I'm working with. I understand that. Now they're second class. Do I bring a woman in to represent them? And a lot of times in business, they'll allow women coming back in. Look, you, you, you had Secretary uh, uh, Clinton was Secretary of State. She was a woman, and she dealt with a lot of Middle Eastern countries that's only very male uh, dominant and so on. It's a little different. But you still have to be aware of what's going on when I'm trying to deal with that organization. What am I trying to sell to them? Okay? All right. Uh, goal orientation, uh, aggressive goal behavior, path orientation. And these are also with companies and individuals, what their uh, uh, standards are, what their values are. Okay? So I've got that. Let's see else we have in here. Okay, so those are some, uh, okay, let's see the barriers. Uh, I think I had that. Okay, so I've got an important uh, quota, embargo. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll put these on. You should at least be uh, aware of these, all right? I'm not going to go until we discuss those in class. And embargoes, basically, you know, partial embargoes. Uh, uh, Cuba, we still got embargo on certain things. Uh, uh, North Korea, I mean, uh, Iran, we've got all kind of embargoes because we, we want to influence them economically, not military. So we put pressure on that, and then they figure from within they're going to, uh, basically uh, 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 see it's a better uh, uh, to deal with the U.S. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Remember, I'm a business person. So right now, I can't do any business with Iran. But if things soften up, that's a whole new market to re uh, ready to buy and sell stuff with it. Okay, tariffs, that's something we should be familiar with. Protective tariffs is what Trump's utilizing now. It's to protect industries here or bring industries back. Revenue, just because we could. That's like the tollway. Okay, subsidiaries, uh, subsidies. Basically, the U.S. doesn't do any subsidies. The uh, European Union, the way they're set up, they basically help the company, and then the company pays back is that a subsidy if they make a profit uh, yes it, very questionable remember a little different framework now china basically subsidizes a lot of them because they're are part of the country is all run as communist country even some of the enterprises that are in a free market there is a member of the chinese party that is involved in that it's a command society so the government is involved i had to be aware of that so if i'm given an intellectual property i'm given something i have to understand the government is part of that in the u.s not so does that give me a fair plan advantage if the government uh, subsidizes or helps out on that just to be aware of what's going on here you do evaluation again this is a nation's currency counter trading that's complex bartering if you look what's going on with uh, iran they can't sell in the market so but they'll barter oil instead of using what they call a petrol dollar they're using just oil uh, uh for maybe goods or something else food or whatever they want 
medicine, environmental forces, okay, developing country, technology, and here's where you're looking at the pollution, everything else, how much, right? So uh, developing country is difficult and possible. Now, China is a developing country. I think it's past a developing country. It has to be re negotiated as a basically uh, major economic thing. It's no longer developing. It's way past. It has a larger thing. So they don't get the same benefits as a developing country. You're already developing the uh, uh, economy and you should be able to pay more and, uh, and not have all those benefits going in there. I'm already working. You're doing pretty good. We shouldn't be subsidizing you and giving you a uh, 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 breaks or whatever reason as you would if I would look at uh, uh, Brazil or some of the other uh, not Brazil some of the other smaller countries that are developing trying in, in Africa trying to uh, come Uganda or something trying to come up to developing so I'm trying to help them okay okay uh, techno uh, technologies uh, right now US is pretty good we're losing that to India we're losing that but we're bringing a lot of this stuff back what do you like of that because of the tariffs and it's more uh, it's less than expensive buying here and people are beginning to look at hey uh, I want to look for the US uh, uh, label versus uh, China I want uh, products made here because it helps employers here that's the, that's the mindset look I, uh, it's not only the administration uh, remember the culture changes this is the way it's going I'm a small business I kind of flow with the flow Okay, merchandise, what else do we have here? Uh, buy or, uh, or sell less. Okay, so what else do we have here? Legal concerns, again, you look at a dumping, uh, again, because the company, uh, uh, the country's helping their, uh, they sell the products here in the U.S. less, uh, uh, cheaper than they would sell in their home country because they're subsidizing and after a while, uh, our industries can't keep up with it because the prices are so low. I'm looking for the best deal as a small business. I go to Chinese, eventually the industries here like the steel, they go out of business because they can't be competitive and now now uh, the other countries uh, were at a disadvantage to get rises because we have no alternative supplier. But so when I do a protective tariff, what uh, this administration is doing, Trump administration is doing, you put a protective tariff on a lot of the good. So now it, it says, hey, if I got to pay this tariff, uh, uh, this cost raises it up. It makes it equal with our domestic uh, manufacturer. Remember, it's got to be just as good as quality and the same thing with production. So let's not just keep on adding tariffs and, uh, and I'm just helping them out and they're not being effective, efficient. It has to have both. Those are the, the two equations uh, for it to be successful. So now we got manufacturing, we got the same prices, we're doing good. Now, China, because of the tariff, to say, hey, we're paying it. No, China says now, because it is competitive, I don't buy from China, I buy from the U.S. They're basically lowering their prices, anticipating a 75% uh, uh, percent tariff on that, and so the price is lower. So when I look at it, it's almost like they're paying the tax ahead of time. And to me, as a business, I'm still buying from China because it's the best deal. Okay, but just to be aware of that, okay, and I got uh, uh, penalized, okay, uh, small business on here, uh, they're the keys for all countries, uh, instead of the multinational, international, but you've got to teach them now in community colleges how to start to get into that business, and technology makes it easier, I don't have to worry about the cash, as long as you got Visa Master Chart, they'll do the conversion rate, the exchange rate, I just got to know how to ship it, and you have UPS, you have uh, uh, FedEx, you have HDL, uh, basically, they're all shipping companies already working international to help small businesses, even the post office, how to get everything ready to get it past customs and working, okay, and getting help on here, last thing, export center, uh, a lot of community colleges has an SBA office, Office, small business administration they also have an export uh, area as part of their branch uh, you know the uh, small business administration is basically the main uh, corporation they get uh, exporting importing they help you out they help you uh, uh, set up they find uh, uh, places for your product they help you for financing they help you to do international just just the government and look when you got why the government help me the, it's not like uh, uh, handout money they're giving you seed money once you're successful they, trust me they'll tax you and everything else on that okay and then export centers you have it and then uh, you have a matching buyers and selling and everything else all right so that's it that's our whole thing hopefully i have this underneath a half an hour is what i'm trying uh remember take the class this is, this is a quick overview so when you're looking at it going globally uh expand uh, level one Okay, so this is everything we covered. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki. Thank you for listening to this. Uh, uh, sign me up for my class. Uh, I teach at two community colleges here in Illinois. Or just uh, 
it, it, it's something for you if you're taking international or you're going to open up international and you happen to find this YouTube uh, on education. Hey, it gives you an idea. Oh, geez, I got to know all this stuff. And now you do the research. Again, thank you very much. Uh, and I'll see you later. Hit the like button. <laughs> I always do that because that's all my custom, uh, 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 my podcast. And that's fine. Let me see. Okay, 28 minutes. Not too bad. I'm doing better on this.